Good day, grade 12. Welcome to this next lesson in mathematics. Thank you for joining us on this Friday afternoon. I don't know where you are, but where I am, it's cold and windy and the last haul of winter, I'm hoping. Right, so we were doing the analytical geometry. And as I mentioned to you yesterday, the reason I'm doing so much analytical geometry is because it makes up quite a large part of paper two. And actually, it's the same type of question over and over again. So if we get to just get grips with it, we can actually get very easy, easily get very good marks for this section of paper two and then that makes it easier to get good marks overall okay so what I want to do is I would like to do this question and the next question whoopsie wrong way the next question and then we're moving on to the factor theorem so we'll see how it goes it depends totally on the amount of time that this takes as to how far we get okay um I will on when will I be doing it on uh, next week on Tuesday, I will be setting up a live, I think I told you that I was going to, um, a live assessment, um, which I will let you guys know about on Monday and also quickly go through on Monday with you how to access the assessment. And then I'd like you guys to do it because then it will um, give me an idea of what you guys know and don't know. And then at least it'll give me an idea of um, what I need to teach to. Okay, so let's go through this. It says in the diagram below, below the line joining Q and T, Q and T, um, joining Q which is minus two, three, so minus two, minus three, I'll slow down, and P, which is AB, okay, A and B are greater than zero, zero, yes, make an angle of 45 degrees with the X axis. Okay, that's fine. Easy. QP, the length of QP is 7 root 2 units. And N, 7, 1 is the midpoint, which they already showed us, of PR. And PR and M is the midpoint of QR. Hmm, that's interesting. Okay, why is it interesting? Because that comes in with geography. I mean, geometry, geography, geometry. And remember the midpoint theorem, it said that if you join the midpoint of this line and the midpoint of that line, then these two lines are parallel. And if this is X units long, then this is two X units long. Okay, so that there's the midpoint theorem. And admittedly, that is part of your analytical geometry, but obviously when it comes to the exam paper, which this is out of, they can mix and match their questions. Okay, so the first question is they want the gradient of PQ. PQ. Okay, well, that's pretty easy. Since we've got the angle of 20, 45 degrees, you should know the gradient is one. But if you don't, we can work it out. We know the tan of theta equals M. Since we are told that the angle of inclination is 45 degrees, we can say tan of 45 degrees equals, and then we can go and find our calculator and we can clear it and we can go tan of 45 close brackets equals one. Ta -da! So the gradient of PQ equals one. Okay. Now it says they want the equation of MN, MN, okay, in the form Y equals MX plus C and give reasons. Okay, so as I've mentioned before, if you look at this triangle, and I'm going to use the highlighter, if I look at this triangle, yeah, I've got PTQ and QR, oh, sorry about the wobbly line, and PR and that, they tell us that this is a midpoint. They tell us that this is a midpoint, okay? So using the midpoint theorem that we know about, if you join the midpoint of the two lines, this line is gonna be parallel to that line, which means it's gonna be the same gradient okay so we know therefore that this line is parallel to this which means we already know that the form of the graph this equation this line the equation line so far is going to be y equals x plus c because you don't write the one okay and then we need to find the c but we have a point on that line it's very nice we've got seven one so we can substitute that seven one into here so when y is one x is seven plus C, so C is going to be minus six. And what I always tell you guys, I say, always make sure that it makes sense. And yes, if I carry this on down, do you agree that it cuts 
down below minus three. So that makes sense. So therefore, this is y is equal to x minus six. OK, so that's the equation there. In fact, I'm not going to write it there. I'm going to write it next to it. So we don't get confused. OK, y is equal to x minus six. OK, so now we've done that one. Now that I want the length of mn, OK, now again, if you look at this, you think you need to use the distance formula, but then you see you don't have m, and you think, well, I could get m, I could, that's a midpoint of qr, and then you realize you don't have r, and then you go, oh my word, how am I supposed to do this? And then you realize that actually it's not that bad because you know from the midpoint theorem that if this is parallel to this and these are the midpoints, then if this line is x long, this line is going to be double the length. In other words, mn is half the length of PQ. So we know that mn equals half the length of PQ. And they gave us the length of QP or PQ. It is 7 root 2. So therefore, this is going to be a half times by 7 root 2, which is going to be 7 over 2 root 2. There you go. That's what it is. It's 7 over 2 root 2. If you really want to, you can put that in your calculator, but you don't have to. Right. Now they want the length of RS. Okay, so now we have to think a little bit. They want the length of RS. Okay, but what did they say? They said in the diagram below the line joining Q is minus 2 minus 3 and P is AB where B is greater than 0 and it makes an angle of 45 degrees with the x-axis. And then it says N is the midpoint of PR, okay, and M is the midpoint of QR. Now, they don't say anything about S, so, hmm, um, I'm tempted to say that the length of RS is going to be the same as QP, but I'm not seeing enough information that they, they haven't given us enough information to prove that that is definitely a rhombus or a parallelogram. Yeah, they say the coordinates of S such that PQR is in this order is a parallelogram, and then they want the coordinates of P. So I don't know if they assumed that we should have seen that this should have been a parallelogram. Okay, so therefore, if this is a parallelogram, do you agree that SR should be the same length as QP. Do you agree that SR should be the same length as? The length of RA should be the same length as QP and therefore that is going to be 7 root 2. Okay. Nowhere in here before this did they say they're making it a parallelogram. Um, so I think that they're assuming that we should have read it. Okay, now they say they want the coordinates of S such that PQRS in this order is a parallelogram. PQRS. Okay, so we know that the length of this is 7 root 2. Okay, we have this point here, which is minus 2, minus 3. And what else do we know? Um, let me just read this again. In the diagram below, the line joining Q minus 2 minus 3 and P, A, B, A, we make an angle of 45 degrees, Q, P, and this here is N is, seven point, is a midpoint of P, R, yeah, and M is the midpoint of Q, R, okay. Um, And we've worked out the gradient of PQ, we've worked out the equation of MN, we've worked out the length of MN, we've left out the length of RS, we now need to work out the coordinates of S such that PQRS in this order is a parallelogram. And then they want us to work out the coordinates of P. Quite candidly, I'm going to work out the coordinates of P first, and then I can work out the coordinates of S, and I'll show you why. And remember that usually they ask you to do these questions in the order that they come in, okay? But if they have asked you this and you can't see how to do it, there's nothing wrong with you doing them in the wrong order. Well, the, in, 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 out of order, okay? So how are we going to get the coordinates of P, okay? Well, do you agree that we can, got, can get the equation of the line 
Okay. First of all, do you agree that we have the length of this? Okay, so in other words, normally the length formula is the square root of x1 minus x2 squared plus y1 minus y2 all squared. Okay, but now we have the length. 7 root 2 is equal to, wait for it, in this case it's going to be a minus minus 2 all squared, I'm calling this point 2 by the way, and I'm calling this point 1, plus y, oh sorry, that's not y, it's b, b, no, wrong color, sorry, b minus, minus 3, all squared, which equals the square root of a plus 2, all squared plus b plus 3 all squared okay so now you've got two variables so that doesn't really help us but we also can work out the equation of this line because we know the gradient is 1 okay so therefore we can say that y is equal to x plus c and we happen to have this point minus 2 minus 3 in it so we can go minus 3 is equal to minus 2 plus c so for c is going to be minus 2 minus 3 plus 2, which is minus 1 is equal to C. Okay, so therefore do you agree that Y is equal to X minus 1 is the formula for this line, which means that if this is B, this is equal to A minus 1. Okay, so I can now substitute that into this equation here. Okay, and that's what I'm going to do, but I need some space. So I'm going to erase the black above it and I'm going to write this down again so that in a different color so you can see where I'm at. So I'm going to go 7 root 2 is equal to the square root of and we're going to go a plus 2 squared plus bracket wherever we see a b we're going to write a minus 1. So it becomes a minus 1 plus 3 all squared. Okay, so now we're going to solve for A. So I'm going to raise the rest of this. Sure, it's quite a nice question, hey? It's quite nice and tricky. Um, so let's do this. Okay. Um, so where were we blue? Okay, so the easiest way to do this is to square both sides. It becomes 49 times by 2 is equal to A squared, I don't know why the brackets say, plus 2A plus 4, and then plus, we might as well make this nice, it becomes a, hmm, that's interesting, plus 2 all squared again, because minus 1 plus 3 is 2, yeah, okay, so then, sorry, I'm just making sure, so 49 times 2 is going to be 2 nines are 18, carry 1, that's going to be 98 is equal to a squared plus 2a plus 4 plus a squared plus 2a plus 4. So you got 2a squared plus 4a plus 8 is equal to 98. Okay, so do you agree we can divide everything by 2? So we get 49 is equal to a squared plus 2a plus 4. So therefore a squared plus 2a and when we take that across, it becomes minus 49. So it becomes minus 45 equals 0. And now we need factors of 45 that are somehow going to give us a 2. And I'm running out of space again. So let me just erase. I wish somehow that we could get a way of scrolling pages that we could still see the writing, even if it got a little bit smaller. You know what I mean? I don't want it to disappear entirely. And I'd like to, yeah, I must look into that. Okay, so anyway, so what do we have? We have, I'm going to rewrite it at the top, a squared plus 2a minus 45 equals naught. Okay, factors of 45 are hmm, 1 and 45, do we agree? Oh, 3 and 15. 
five and nine, and do you see it's not actually going to give us anything nice? So we need to use the what? We need to use the formula, the formula. So we're going to do that. So we're going to say, okay, fine. A is equal to minus B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. Well, obviously this A stands for X, okay? So now, sorry, <laughs> if you do this, you get A is equal to minus 2 plus or minus the square root of B squared is 2 squared minus 4 times by 1 times by minus 45 all over 2 times by 1, which equals minus 2 plus or minus the square root of 2 squared is 4 minus times minus is a plus. 4 fives are 20, carry 2, 4 eights, 4 fours are 16, 17, 18, all over 2 times 1 which is minus 2 plus or minus the square root of 184 over 2. Okay, now I'm going to give you two seconds to try, or two minutes quickly, to try and finish that part of the question and then go back and do the coordinates of S. I just need to go and I'll be back in a second. Sorry, great tools. I had a technical issue. My <laughs> so it was to remember three flights of stairs quickly to sort it out. Sorry about that. Whew, geez, I'm unfit. Okay, so, <laughs> so I hope you got that right. Um, you got minus two plus minus square root of 184 over two. Okay, so what we need to do now is we need to erase all of this because I need space again. I hope you guys have all got the answer. If not, don't sweat. I'm going to show you how to do it now. Okay, so you need your calculator out again, and we're going to take it across to the right. <sighs> My practice stairs, I really need to. Okay, right, never mind that. So we've got minus 2. We're going to do the plus first, so we go plus. 
the square root of 184 all over 2 equals, and that doesn't help at all. So you press it and we get 5.78. Okay, so that's 5.78. So the options are that A is 5,78 or, okay, let's have a look. Now you do have to do it even if you don't think it's going to be a specific answer that you want, but you still need to show it. So we're going to do fraction minus 2 minus the square root of 184 all over 2, two e move it over, equals, and you'll see that you get minus 7.78 minus 7 comma 7 8. But what did they say? They said that a and b are both greater than 0, okay? Which means that the a value of this has to be 5 comma 7 8 and the b value therefore is going to be 4 comma 7 8. 4 comma 7 8. Why is the b value set 4 comma 7 8? Because b is a minus 1. So now we know what these values are, okay? So now S is easy because what do we do? We work up, work out how much, because these lines are all parallel, because of the fact that it's a parallelogram, we can say that the amount of, that we went up and the amount we went across over here, okay, and we can work out, what else can we work out? We could work out, hmm, Hang on, where was I? Sorry, I've lost track of what I was doing. Okay, so therefore we can work out P. We've done P. Now it says the coordinates, of, sorry, I'm back to S. The coordinates of S such that PQRS is, an, or is in this order is a parallelogram. Okay, so we know that N is, oh, there we go. We know that N is the midpoint of PR, but we also know that N is going to be the midpoint of QS because of the fact that if that's a parallelogram, the diagonals bisect each other. So they have to cross at the midpoint, okay? Which we can means we can use the midpoint theorem. So actually we didn't have to do it in out of order. I was being dwarf. Okay, but never mind. So now we've worked that out. We've worked out P. Oof, that was a long one. Now we can just work out S. S is actually quite easy now. I'm going to, oh, okay, that's fine. Because I just need to do, I just need to do this. I've got Q. I've got N, I now want S. If S is the point of the parallelogram, then Q and S, N has to be the midpoint of QS as well. So we can use the midpoint equation, which says that M of QS would normally be, that's, it's gonna be, would normally be, this is X, Y, right? So it'd be X, plus minus 2 over 2 and then it'd be y plus minus 3 over 3 over 2 and that would equal 7 and 1 okay so therefore we'd have x minus 2 over 2 would equal 7 or y minus 3 over 2 is equal to 1 okay so therefore x minus 2 is equal to 14 so x is equal to 12 and y minus 3 is equal to 2, therefore y is equal to 5. Awesome. So therefore we've got that this point here would be 17, 5. There we go. There we go. Done. Easy peasy. Okay, now let's move on. Now it says, so the line with the equation x equals y plus 2 intersects the circle defined by x squared is y squared equals 20 at a, b. Okay, so this time they have been given us a diagram, so we can just draw a little diagram. And guys, if you're going to draw your own diagrams, that's fine, but please use a ruler. Unfortunately, my software doesn't allow me to have a snap to grid or a ruler facility on this, so... That's a bit of a bummer. Okay, so now it says we've got x squared plus y squared equals 20. Now remember 20 is the radius squared. So to find out more or less how big this is, we can actually go and do the square root of 20. So we're going to go square root of 20 equals, and that doesn't help, 4.47. Okay, which means this circle is centered on the origin, and it's about, okay, let's make it 1, 2, three, four, and yeah, one, two, three, four. Okay, so it's about that big. 
more or less okay it's really a rough diagram okay as you can see right so that's my circle of x squared plus y squared equals 20. down it says the equation of y equals x plus 2 intersects a circle so x plus 2 is a straight line going up to the right it's going to go through a positive 2 and it's going to go through 1 2 the vs somewhere and it cuts the graph Whee! and it says that it cuts the graph at a and b so y is equal to x plus 2 and we've got point A and point B. It doesn't say where, where. It says determine the coordinates of points A, B. So you didn't have to draw this in order to solve this, okay? I just like to draw it so that I know what I'm doing. Okay, so if they intersect, do you agree? That means that they are this point, hang on a minute, at this point here, the, a, the X and Y values are the same for both the straight line and the circle. And similarly, the x, y value, x and y values at this point are the same for both the straight line and the circle, right? So that means I could take this and I could substitute it in there. In other words, wherever I see a y, I need to write x plus 2 and then solve for it. Okay, so let's do that. So we're going to go x squared plus, wherever I see a y, I'm going to write x plus 2 all squared is equal to 20. So I've got x squared plus this becomes x squared plus 2x plus 4 is equal to 20. So that becomes 2x squared plus 2x plus 4 minus 20 equals 0. So it becomes 2x squared plus... All right, it's 2x squared, it's 4x. Sorry. Let me just check this. 2 times x, yeah, shame. Um, sorry, it's 4x, 4x minus 16 equals 0. So then it becomes, we can divide it all by 2, so it becomes x squared plus 2x minus 8 equals 0. So that's going to be x plus 4, x minus 2 equals 0. Therefore, x equals minus 4 or x equals 2. Yay! Okay, so therefore we know that this point here is going to be minus 4 something. And this point is going to be 2 something. And now we just have to substitute into either of those equations to get the y. But I'm going to substitute into that one because that's way easier. So I'm going to go y is equal to x plus 2. So therefore it's minus 4 plus 2 is going to be minus 2. Or it's going to be 2 plus 2, which is 4. There you go. So now I've got those two points. Excellent. Now, it says determine the length of chord AB. Well, since I have the two points, determining the chord is pretty easy because we're just going to use the length formula. Do you agree? So we know the distance formula. It's on the formula sheet. The distance formula is equal to the square root of d is equal to the square root of x minus x1 all squared plus y minus y1 all squared. Okay, so we can just use these two points and I'm going to call a x1 and b x2. So I've got the square root of, doesn't matter, minus 4 minus 2 squared plus minus 2 minus 4 squared. Okay. And then it becomes the square root of minus 4 minus 2 is minus 6 squared plus minus 2 minus 4 is minus 6 squared. So it's the square root of 36 plus 36, which is the square root of 72. And then if we put that in our calculator, it's just out of interest to see if it's going to turn out something nice. I'm going to go square root 72 equals, and it goes to 6 root 2. So it equals 6 root 2. Okay. Um, if you want to know how we get that, you can think about it this way. You can break 72 up into its factors. So 72 can be written as 6 times 12. Do you agree? Which is written as 6 times, 6 times 2, which is the same as 6 squared times 2. So if you put that under the square root, this becomes the square root of 6 squared times 2, which is the square root of 6 squared times the square root of 2, which is just 6 
root 2. Okay, so that's how you would get it if you didn't have your calculator available. Okay, right, now it says determine the coordinates of M, the midpoint of AB. Okay, so that's pretty easy as well. So this is just really making sure you remember all your different formula. M is equal to going to be x1 plus x2 over 2 y1 plus y2 over 2 and remember what i said to you these are all on your formula sheet you just have to make sure you know how to use them so it becomes 2 minus 4 over 2 4 minus 2 over 2 so 2 minus 4 is minus 2 divided by 2 is minus 1 4 minus 2 is 2 divided by 2 is 1. So the midpoint is x is minus 1, y is 1. So it's about over there. Not bad. M. Okay, that's my midpoint. Next. It says, show that OM is perpendicular to AB, where O is the origin. So we need to show that this is perpendicular. So we found the length. We haven't found the... the So I'm just thinking this is actually one of the proofs that you have in your um, Euclidean geometry that if you drop a line to the center from the center of the circle to the from the center of the circle to a midpoint of a chord, then you have that it's perpendicular. But now they're saying show that OM is perpendicular to AB. So we actually have to do that. In order to do that, we need to get the gradient of AB and we need to get the gradient of OM and show that there are perpendicular. So the first thing we need to do is erase some stuff so that I have space to write. Okay. All right. So let's have a look. Yeah, wouldn't it be cool like if this part of the board over here, this could be like a board that scrolls. So I could keep on having space and this would stay stationary and then I could keep on writing there instead of having, never mind. Um, <laughs> so anyway, maybe there's some software out there that does that. I'll have a look, see. Okay, so let's get the gradient of AB. The gradient of AB is going to be Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. As soon as you have to show the lines are perpendicular or parallel, you need to work with the gradients, right? So again, I'm going to call this point 2 and this point 1. So we've got minus 2 minus 4 over minus 4 minus 2. And guys, it really doesn't matter, again, like I said, which order you do these in. It just matters that you're subtracting the y from the y and the x from the x. It's really not going to work if you're subtracting the other way around. So it becomes minus 6 divided by minus 6, which is 1. Okay, so the gradient of this is 1. So now let us find out the gradient of this. But now we found out the midpoint of this, which is minus 1, 1. Minus 1, 1. Okay, so the gradient of OB is going to be y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. I'm going to call this point 1 and this point 2. So therefore it's going to be 0 minus 1 over 0 minus minus 1 which is going to be minus 1 over 1, which is negative 1. Ta-da! Therefore, MAB multiplied by MOB equals 1 times by minus 1, which is minus 1. Therefore, MAB, or just AB, is perpendicular to OB. Ta-da! Done. Sorry, why am I saying AB when I meant OM? OM. OM, 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 sorry, sorry. Okay, now, next, it says, determine the equation of the tangents to the circles at points A and B. So now we want to find a tangent at the circle at points A and B. Hmm, okay. Okay, so... I know it's very tempting to think that it's going to be the you could use this thing's gradient 
and then make it perpendicular of that. But in fact, it's not because remember the tangents are perpendicular to the radius, okay? And this circle is centered on the origin. So what we need to do is realize that we need to first find out the gradients of the radius from O to A. And then we need to find the gradient of the radius from O to B. And then we need to manipulate them and then substitute in the points. Okay, so let's do that. So first we're going to work with A. And we're going to use this blue. So we're working with A. This is the center of the circle. X squared plus Y squared equals 20. So that there is the radius. Do you agree? And that is perpendicular to the tangent. So the first thing we need to do is find the gradient of OA. So M of OA is going to be Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1 which equals, let's call this point 2 and this point 1. So it's going to be 0 minus 4 over 0 minus 2, which is just going to be 2. Okay, so the gradient of OM is 2. Therefore, the gradient of the tangent at A, okay, is going to be negative a half. Okay, remember what I said to you, just flip it and times by minus 1. Okay, so now we know the gradient of this is minus a half. Okay, now we need to find the equation. So you've got y is equal to minus a half x plus c. We've got this point 2, 4, which we can substitute in. So we've got 4 is equal to minus a half times by 2 plus c. This cancels the c, so you've got 4 equals minus 1 plus c. So c is equal to? Five. Therefore, the equation of this tangent is y is equal to minus a half x plus five. Okay, so now we've got that. Now we need to find the equation of this tangent. Okay, so let's do that. Okay, so now we need again the gradient of OB. The gradient of OB. Okay, so let's work on that. The gradient of OB. So uh, let's work with black. So M of OB, okay, so now we're going from here to here. And I'm going to call this point 2 again. I'm going to call this point 1. Is going to be Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. Y2 is going to be 0 minus minus 4 over 0 minus minus 2, which is going to be 4 divided by 2, which is 2. That's interesting. Huh. So therefore, am I right? 0 minus minus 4. No, I'm not right at all, <laughs> because that's X and that's Y, I was going to say. Okay, so let's try again. This is X and this is Y. So it's 0 minus minus 2 over 0 minus minus 4, which is going to be 2 over 4, which equals a half. So the gradient of this line is going to be a half. Therefore, the gradient of the tangent at B is going to be negative 2, right? You flip it and you times it by minus. Now we have Y is equal to negative 2X plus C. So what can we do? We can substitute in this value here of minus 4 minus 2. So we go minus 4 is going to be minus 2 times minus 2 plus C. So therefore... I'm right. Sorry, I'm just checking my numbers. So you've got minus 4 is equal to 4 plus C. 
So C is equal to minus 8. Therefore, the equation of this line is Y is equal to minus 2X minus 8. Okay, not too bad here. Finally, it says determine the coordinates of the point C where the two tangents intersect. So we want to find where these two tangents intersect. Do you agree the point at which these two tangents intersect is actually where these two lines that we've just worked out meet, okay? We've worked out this blue one, y is equal to minus a half x plus 5. And we've worked out this black one, y is equal to minus 2x minus 8, okay? So do you agree that we could actually say that we have got we can say that the place that these two tangents is going to meet which is very far away is a point of intersection and when these two equations are equal so y is equal to minus a half x plus five and y is equal to minus 2x minus 8. And we need to find out where these two meet. So what do we do? We let them be equal. We're going to go minus a half x plus 5 is equal to minus 2x minus 8. Let's take it across. You get minus a half x plus 2x is equal to minus 8 minus 5. So this is minus one and a half x, which is just three over two. No, it's plus one and a half x. It's three over two x is equal to minus 13. So x is going to be minus 13 times by two over three, which is minus 26 over three. And if you divide that, three goes into 21 seven times. So it's minus seven. Um, 21, 8, 8 and 2 thirds. Okay, so unfortunately we've run out of time, but we will finish this last question, this last last question, and then go on to the factor theorem on Monday. I hope you have had a good lesson, that you've learned a bit, and that um, you have a wonderful weekend. Cheers.